Let's start with just some guided tuning in or becoming aware of what is present in your current field of perception. I'll give some guidance for those who would like or appreciate that. And if you don't need any guidance, then I invite you to just let my words be in the background and let them be in the background anyway. <laughs> Let the foreground be what you are aware of right now, whatever that is, whether it's thoughts or imagery or sensations or feelings or um, energies, vibrations, or even if it's an extraordinary sense of expanded connectedness, free of personal self, whatever is present for you right now, give that your attention. And just allow whatever is moving through, whatever is shifting in your field of attention, just let it come and go. Notice if you get hooked anywhere or if you're fighting or struggling with anything. And just be aware of that and come back to simple attention, the movement of breath, the sensations in the body. Give yourself gentle reminders to relax, gentle reminders to let go of trying and struggling. Gentle reminders to be patient and kind to yourself, if especially if you're having a hard time. Give yourself permission to let healing and transformation unfold in its own natural way, not the way we want or the way we think it should be happening, but rather allowing how it's working to show us the way rather than us dominating with our will, thinking we know the way. <laughs> if you're distracted or mind's wandering constantly or you're caught up in your drama, your pain, just be more gentle with yourself then and let go of any judgments or comparisons about how you think you're supposed to be right now but rather let yourself be how it is. Let it, let it be how it is so that you can release the tears, the fear, the anger, the frustration, so it can cycle, the emotions can turn back into their essence, which is chi, which is energy, and release out of your nervous system. Don't get caught in the stories. Just keep coming back from them. The mind gravitates automatically into story. Not, not your fault. It's how we're built. Just come back gently.
even if you have to bring yourself back. Many, many times, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter that you wander. What's more important that you gently return to here. That's all. That's all that really matters. <laughs> I have so much I want to share with you. I, I, I don't even know where to begin, actually. It's just <clears throat> my, my problem sometimes is I have so much to share that it just, I start tripping over it, you know? Because there's so many levels wanting to come out at the same time. <clears throat> so bear with me as I fumble along <laughs> in my sharing and hope that some of the download will truly be helpful and beneficial to you. Uh, first a little nice hot water. <clears throat> I think what brings us, each and every one of us in our own way, to the what might be called the inner search or the path, there are a lot of names for it, is something that brings us to asking the essential questions and begin the search for meaning in the mystery. What is it all about, <laughs> Alfie? <laughs> um, I, I was asking that when I was four, looking up at the stars. So I was questioning early this life, but they tell me I was, I had, had other lives, if that's right, where I, let's say I'd been at this for quite a long time. <laughs> Who knows? Anyway, um, and we also, and we naturally as human beings, in order to survive and be comfortable and all, all of that, we naturally have a relative need to understand the meaning of things so that we can take care of ourselves and each other and the planet. When we come here, I think often we've hit a wall or we, let's just say we don't want to suffer anymore <laughs> or something has opened up in us that we realize is much greater than what we normally perceive as reality or relative reality. And so we start the search, so to speak. We start on the path consciously, as it were. These words may not make sense to you or have any meaning for you, and if they don't, don't worry about it. What, what will make sense to you and what will guide you will come forward in your own experience and show you the way. My job is to help you not follow me or what my process has been, but to rather learn how to understand how it's working, this transformative process is working in you, and how you can follow it and support it. That's what I'm teaching. I've spent a lifetime of uh, learning to practice. I started out as a, con as a violinist at a very, very young age, practicing from age 6 to 22 to 4 hours a day and performing, concert tours, everything, you know, basically professional life as a, as a young person. I, didn't, I gave it up when I was 20, but I realized it wasn't for me. <laughs> you don't need to hear that story. <laughs> but, um, but I think it's taken me this long in my life to begin to understand profoundly the importance of understanding what practice is. And my very dear friend, Aja, Aja Shanti and I were, were having a wonderful talk very recently, and we talked a lot about this together because we share really an identical pers perspective of what's going on. We have different ways that we help people, as you know, if you know him, but, um, but we're one in our understanding. <laughs> anyway, um, 
So I'm going to share with you some of that download. You know, some of it might be helpful to you, and if it is, great. If not, whatever. If it triggers you or brings up questions, you can ask me about it when we have our dialogue. As I've often said, practice is the art of refinement, of bringing attention to what is. It's not about getting the right note on the instrument. It's not about having an getting back into awakened, spacious, no self-consciousness. That is not practice. That's ego will wanting something, you know, wanting some pleasure, wanting relief, wanting a better set of circumstances, whatever that is. That's fine. Practice is has no will in it. Not really. Yes, the will behind the effort to bring yourself to practice is required. That's why they say the hardest thing is showing up. So you've already shown up. <laughs> you already did the hardest part, which is, you know, sign up, pay your 20 bucks, and be here. <laughs> That's the hard part. Actually, you might think it's not the hard part, but it is. Showing up is 90, maybe 100% of the path, and the rest of it you surrender to. You are not in control of. You will never understand. You will never get your mind wrapped around it. Because honestly, when you come to the true realms of interconnected existence, there is no one who knows anything, period. <laughs> now, that's not a concept to believe in or to follow. It's just for those of us who, let's just say, have been on this journey for a while and continually discovering, it's kind of how we talk about it. And so we know that we understand each other. But I don't think it's so helpful to tell you that except that when you're caught in wanting to know, when you're caught in wanting a result, some part of you can say, oh, isn't that what John was saying about my ego? Wanting, wanting an answer. It's like what was wonderful at the retreat when Salwan shared, I hope you don't mind me saying this, Salwan, but it was so great. You realized all of a sudden you caught yourself. You said, I was just trying to be smart. And you know, there's nothing wrong with being smart. In fact, in relative reality, it's, it's in many ways really a good thing. It's helpful to be smart and figure stuff out. So this is where we begin to make a separation between ego survival uh, instinct, instinctual reflexes, and learning what practice truly is. Practice does not get a result. This is what you have to understand. Practice is about how is continually bringing attention to what is. So right now, how are you bringing attention to being here and listening? Are you open? Are you relaxed? Are you getting tight? Are you getting tense? Are you, are you starting to get triggered and trying to... Are you arguing with me in your head <laughs> about how I'm saying it all wrong? <laughs> <laughs> are you not even hearing me which is much better and just tuning into the presence <laughs> if you are I'd recommend that okay um, Practice is never about getting a result. If you think practice is about getting a result, then your ego is in control and you don't even know it. Your ego is in what we call the uh, profoundly unconscious um, spiritual identity. It is the most dangerous entity, the most dangerous identified self in human history and the cause of extraordinary, endless suffering. And let me be clear. And I said this to Aji the other day, and he said, 100% right. I'll tell you what I said to him. And he said, 100% right, John, absolutely right. Belief 
is the cause of all suffering, period. Belief is the cause of all suffering. Now, I'm not saying there aren't beliefs that are helpful and supportive and useful and functional. Of course there are. Of course there are. But this is where if you think you know you're going to get a result because you're going to get more Shakti or get more whatever you think is going to get you over the edge into a higher state of being, whatever that is, and it could be a lot of things. All that is is some ego attachment to what you think is happening and how it's happening. And you know what? That rug will be pulled out from under you sooner or later. I guarantee it. That is why we encourage when you're practicing to keep returning to Zen mind, which is an open mind that doesn't have a preconceived idea about what it is. Beginner's mind. It's beginning right now. It's not the expert that knows everything, that's read every spiritual book, heard every spiritual teacher, knows the whole thing, has read everything. Because I guarantee you, if you've done all that, and I know people who've tried, they're suffering more than anybody. <laughs> that's no guarantee of anything, except being a scholar, knowledgeable, smart. <sighs> okay. Am I getting too heavy? <laughs> Sorry. I get I get inspired, you know, sometimes. So what do you, what is it that you need more than anything on the path, so to speak? Acceptance. Acceptance. What is that? Allowing what is, even if you hate it, even if you are screaming at the top of your lungs that you can't handle it anymore. If that's happening, then you need to do emotional healing work and emotional clearing work, because I guarantee you the, the real pandemic on the planet, yes, COVID, but the real pandemic is emotional constipation. <laughs> emotional repression because the egos thought they could mind over matter or man against nature and look where we are on this planet on the brink of extinction because we thought we knew how to control nature and what we've done is we've practically des destroyed our ability to exist here that's not intelligence <laughs> that's profound ignorance thinking it's smart just because it has money or power or influence. So we need the work you're doing, all of us are doing are actually not just for your own healing, which it will be for, and it is, not just for your own transformation, which it will facilitate. And I'll talk to you about that and I'll help you all the way, all the way. But for us to be together and connect, as I've seen in this horrific tragedy of COVID, which is now hitting my own family. So overwhelmingly. This nightmare, unbelievable. Um, yeah. Someone wrote me after the retreat when I when I found out that my mother-in-law and father-in-law were dying of COVID and my mother-in-law did pass away and and I was going through tremendous emotional intensity and I shared that at the retreat and somebody wrote me the next day and said, thank you for your tears and your bravery. She was amazed because I was able to clear and then be back 100% with the group and with individuals. There was no, nothing in the way. She said, thank you for your tears and your bravery because maybe if my father was able to have tears, he wouldn't have committed suicide. So let me talk about emotion briefly. Because a lot of teachers, spiritual teachers say, oh, that's just 
you don't need to think about that. You don't need to do therapy. You just need to allow the Shakti to completely fill you with grace, and then you will be fine. And you know what? That's not true. <laughs> I have seen this over my whole lifetime, firsthand accounts of countless people I have worked with who've been close to those people, and I guarantee you it's not true. Yes, it's powerful to be in the space of someone who has great presence, yes. But make no mistake, you still need to be a human being and find out how to live fully. And that's what I'm teaching because evolution is the constant integration of consciousness into matter. Suzuki Roshi said practice begins with enlightenment, begins with awakening. A lot of egos, spiritual egos, think it, it's over. Well, wait a minute, I had my awakening. How come I'm still having my stuff? What's wrong with me? That's egoic beliefs based on false teachings that have been around for literally thousands of years. So I know my friend Aj and I are trying to clean it up and we're both working on it hard. I'm doing the I am doing it as much as I can. And I'm also, like you, challenged in my own life. And it forces me to evolve and grow and allow even more of this light to be present. So, Awakening is the beginning of understanding what practice is. And as you bring attention to what is, and you're not in the way, naturally, miraculously, consciousness merges into matter and you become more and more radiant, more and more free, and your life becomes more amazing, even with tragedies like I'm going through. Horrific tragedies that you would not believe what I'm dealing with and what we're dealing with. You just, it's too much to tell anybody, honestly. It's too much to even think about. It's only like, what can we take care of right now? What can we take care of right now? And you know how I know that what that, that works? Because that's what I learned in practice. Bring yourself right to this present moment. And if you have emotions that need to move, please let them move. And if you don't, if, if you're repressed that way and don't know how to do that work, then find people and get therapeutic help, and I can help you with that. I used to do a lot of that work. We need, we need to learn how to discharge our emotions in a way that doesn't get us caught in the story, but rather helps it transmute into the energy that it basically is, not the story and meaning that we ascribe to it. So whether you do breathing practices, whether you do expressive, expressive practices, whether you do body work practices, whether you do whatever you do that helps that, even like psychedelic journeys, I think often could be very helpful for that what I'm seeing with people these days. Whatever you're doing that ex, that's experiment, try everything. I tried everything, <laughs> you know, and I'm glad I did. And, and I still experiment and try things even now as I'm getting older and taking care of my health and everything else that we need to be willing to be creative, explore, and not get caught in the beliefs of what's going to work and how it should be. But rather, listen to what to have, a, have an open, sensitive feedback mechanism in yourself so you can truly follow the way that is being shown to you. Now, this will be a video on a podcast, so that may have been way too much to give you, but sometimes it just comes out like that. So if I overwhelmed you way too much, forgive me. Um, let me let me let me bring it back to simple, and then we'll we'll sit some more, and I'll open up the dialogue. I, I said plenty, a lot, and what I what I'd like to offer you is a simple little thing to take with you today. Is um, what you need to learn if you don't already have this is to install or develop an extraordinarily wonderful internal teacher. An internal guide that can help you come back to your breath or whatever and help, that can really be the loving, caring sort of voice in your inner mind, in your inner heart and being that supports you. And the other side is to learn how to follow instructions. <laughs> 
if you have a challenger like I do, you'll hear instructions. You go, ah, I'll do it my way. I'm not going to do that. If you hear something and say, nope, then notice what that does inside of you, which is the one who pushes away someone who you feel is dominating you, some authority you had in your life that told you what to do, and all you could do was lift your middle finger silently in your own mind, unless you did it out loud like I did, and, and got into big trouble. <laughs> I, had, I, I couldn't keep my mouth shut, as you know, and I also couldn't not tell the truth, but I'm still that way, and that's why... Uh, I found my way because I didn't bullshit myself and I don't make up stories and I hope you're not bullshitting yourself about what you think is happening because if you are you're going to find out eventually what the real truth is and, and that will set you free that will set you free and sometimes you have to be knocked down to the ground and on your knees begging begging for help begging for forgiveness and sometimes you will just wail because it's too much. It's just too much. So if you are releasing emotion and working with that since I brought attention to that, pay attention to how emotion, when it is truly released, turns into energy. And, when, and, and be aware of the energy because energy and presence are literally, well, it's all presence, of course, but that's the real practice is you go from thought into, the, into the, the building of thought, which is emotion, the energy, the energy, the, the energy of emotion turns into the vastness of presence. It's all interconnected. And that's one way to see, and I'm sure many of you have seen this, even when I'm working with somebody here in Satsang and they have something going on and there's a release, and then all of a sudden I'll say, so how are you feeling? Oh, yeah, I feel a lot better. I feel a lot better. That's because it's transmuting. So practice is understanding that awakening is the beginning of the path and life, your whole life, is the process of allowing evolution to transform you. Evolution is not you making it happen, not your beliefs. Because as I mentioned before, in the cave painting they found in Africa 17,000 years ago, it was painted, um, uh, drawings depicting kundalini energy in connection to the source. They didn't have the, the Tao Te Ching then, they didn't have the Bhagavad Gita, they didn't have the Quran and the Bible and all of it. They didn't have any of it. <laughs> they didn't have Zen, non-duality, none of it. But, but it was truly what we are and always have been. So, thank you for letting me rant on and on and on. Clearly I needed to get something off my chest, as my mother would say. And uh, let's sit now, and then I'll open it up for dialogue in a, in, a, in a few minutes. Mm -hmm.